Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Actuality. I'm Josh Wallace, your resident GM and host, and this is The Soul's Direction, a live play of Monty Cook Games' Invisible Sun. Um, I've got most of my cast here, um, and I'm grateful for that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and um, get some quick in introductions out of the way for those of you that are just joining us, and uh, talk about a little bit about what happened last session, and then we'll jump right into the action. So, um, Jeff, why don't we get started with you today? All right. My name is uh, Jeff. You can find me at Jeffrey Boring on Discord. Uh, and I'm playing Albion J. Finch. He is an apostate extraordinaire. Uh, he has a very good friend that almost no one else can see who is a fox friend um, and uh, is basically a southern gentleman. Basically. Except like when that. he's being a little bit bitchy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Kelton. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Kelton. Um, you can find me places as Fesnerax. That's with a PH. Good luck spelling it. Um, and <laughs> I'm playing Billy Burroughs. Uh, he is a jazz musician. He is a weaver. He is an empath. He is a lot. This game has so many epaulets. Um, He's uh, a weirdo and uh, thinks of the entire world as like a grand sort of playground. And he has a background of being super mentally ill uh, and cannot distinguish between dreams and reality. But that doesn't matter anymore because it's Invisible Sun. Um, and I'm super excited to get into tonight. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. And Claire. Hi, everybody. I'm Joanne Wallace. Uh, you can find me as Angel Citadel Joanne or Corsana. I am playing Claire Thespian, a gallant goetic who formerly listened to whispers, but has some undergone some changes and now brandishes battle magic. All right. So let's talk a little bit about where we left off. Um, who wants to take that on? We went to pick a fight. Yeah, tell me about <laughs> it. Well, let's see. First, we left the library after picking a fight there, kidnapping our golden one, who knows what we need, and stashing him on my moving house. Mm -hmm. Then uh, they went to zeros while I was dealing with some personal business of getting a sword. Yeah, I'm getting a sword made. Claire is getting a sword made. And then while they were at zeros, um, they started really pushing the whole thought, kidnapping people and uh, stirring up, getting people riled up because we're picking a fight, starting the war up again. <laughs> That's right. The uh, So over the last year or so, we've been trying to figure out how to broadcast the plays of one Arabast named Orisard the Architect. And we finally put together a broadcast station and hit it in the pail and are broadcasting through the deeps of sleep in the blue bouncing it around lots of people's dreams and uh, into the ether. And now people are listening to that play or that series of plays, I should say, and starting to ask some very hard questions. And the Thaw do not like that very much. And there have been a few gatherings of people, shall we say, that uh, 
uh, have drawn their attention and people have begun to disappear. Um, and along with uh, those kinds of gathering, there's, you know, the nudge of certain people in the know, like Albion, who goes to bars and randomly gets people talking about how mean and cruel the thaw are. And yeah, you know, that's, that's kind of sucky. We should do something about that. <laughs> then proceeds to roll obscenely well on all of his persuasion checks. That, that was telling Joanne earlier, y'all need to stop doing that. You know, <laughs> People in Saturnine are getting hurt because you're rolling high. <laughs> oh, yes. It's Tell a bit me ridiculous. Doing it, and then I'm going to pick up a spell that's going to make it far easier for them to roll high. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea, babe. Eh? So we last left off, if I remember correctly, y'all went back to um, Claire's house. And you were trying to decide where you wanted to go next. No, we had decided we were no, going to the green. No, we stepped okay. through a door that Albion opened to the green. Um, oh, that's Albion right. Albion prepared that's right. extensively. I think he has like a pith helmet. I don't even know. He has like a whole outfit. Uh, he yeah, spent he way too much money on outfit. getting ready. And Billy bought... That's um, right. He's all uh, dapper now. Uh, I remember. Mm-hmm. Billy bought a flask of whiskey oh, and uh, thought about it a little bit. Got some water also, and then uh, went through the gate. Also. Yeah. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, I think we left off right after we stepped through uh, that. Yeah, we left off stepping door. through the portal into the green. Okay. I'm assuming, and, and this is a reality check, okay? I'm assuming that the three of you have all spent some time in the outdoors in real life. Um, camping at a campground or, or, you know, even hiking in the woods. And so you can perhaps imagine... Um, you know, in the in the thick of summer, uh, there's there's uh, uh, leaves on the trees, and you can hear birds in the air, and there's that thick smell of life. Um, you know, and and if you've gone to a cultivated area, the, the there's maybe paths or or large clearings that you can. Um, um, camp in or, or things like that, right? This is nothing like that. While you can still smell that thickness of life, that, that rain and nature smell, there is no path anywhere. Um, you appear in what you could probably call a clearing um, in that there is a break in the canopy of trees that are around you. Um, that break extends for two, maybe 300 feet in any direction. But the ground that you're stepping on is not a manicured grass or anything like that. It is completely overgrown with vines and um, flowers poking through, unlike anything that you've ever seen before. And the vines all have thorns and um, you can see bugs and maybe some, um, some reptiles, um, occasionally off in the distance, you see something larger moving among the trees, um, some kind of mammal or something. You can't quite tell. 
and um, it it it's overgrown. It's just teeming with all kinds of varied life, and um, the closer that you look at the ground, the more you see that um, there are some things. Um, uh, the vines or, or occasionally a flower or, or um, some kind of, of budding tree that are, are starting to stick through that um, look like they're thriving. And then there are other things that um, looks like they've, they've tried to come up through the, the, uh, the ground and were, were suffocated. Um, and it's, it's almost, it's almost equal in measure. Um, so for every, you know, every one thing that comes up that thrives, another comes up and is, is suffocated and dies. Um, and the whole of this area seems to be like that. Um, you, you look close and you see. There's off to the side, uh, about 50, 60 feet away from you, um, there's uh, a rotting carcass of what looks almost like a deer, or, or maybe it was a deer, but it has three heads, um, and only two of them have anything on it. You see vines uh, growing through the... Um, the body of this this carcass poking through flesh and bone and and wrapping around and and um you know there's there's some skin on it but not much left um and, and it looks almost like the the forest the whatever this is whatever this place is is consuming the remains um, off to the other direction, uh, you see a figure walking towards you. And as it walks towards you, um, you see the vines and, and such sort of scoot out of the way. Um, the, the figure is tall. Um, very, very androgynous, very almost, um, oh, if you've seen Lord of the Rings, like Ents, right? Um, it, it, it's got kind of bark for skin, um, but it walks a lot like a man does, um, or a human, um, although it's a lot taller size? than uh -huh. I'm sorry uh, I was asking how tall it was and then we started <laughs> um, you're guessing that this is this creature is probably nine maybe ten feet tall um, extremely thin not like emaciated but live um, like I said, it, it looks almost like it's got bark for skin, um, but it doesn't appear to present a gender at all. Um, and it, it's walking calmly towards you, it, almost in like a, uh, a smooth gait. Um, as it gets closer, you see there is, um... There is no, no real facial structure. You, you can see where the face should be, but it's, it's smooth. It's the only smooth portion of that body that you can see um, that doesn't look like bark. But there's no eyes. There's no nose. There's no mouth. Um, it's just, it looks like wood, but it's not... It's not rough like bark. It's it's like it was polished. 
Amazing. Um, I have to throw something in here uh, okay. because our wonderful uh, GM Josh doesn't have enough to deal with. Um, I feel like he needs a curveball. No, that's not why I'm doing this. I said at the awesome. end of last session um, that Billy was using his ability visitor from the deeps. Um, and I said uh, off camera after we ended that I would look through um, teratology and like pick something out. Uh, I ended up not doing that. Uh, I did look through it, but I instead decided on something from that I've mentioned like a couple of times, like offhand from Billy's backstory. Um, so Billy has brought with him uh, an entity that he calls Merlin. Um, so it is uh, like imagine just a human sort of humanoid figure in a cloak. God knows what's underneath that. Um, the cloak is made of not quite feathers, not quite fur, that stuff that like Archaeopteryx and certain dinosaurs had that's neither of those things, but sort of similar to both. Um, just completely all the way down, covering its entire body. And the head is sort of like the head of a goat, but with deer antlers. Um, and if you're near it, you can just hear this constant. And it's always been in his dreams, and it has occasionally like guided him uh, like go this way in this horrible maze of uh, <laughs> you know the hospital that you're in or whatever um, so he's not aware of what it's capable of that's going to be up to uh, the Josh uh, but it is here with us following <laughs> behind Billy just okay just so everybody knows that's there Fair enough. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do before we actually start this scene is I'm going to pull a card. And that card is Driver. Mysteries, rats, mirrors, stone means impetuous, travel, forward motion, and speed. Always moving forward. Sometimes there is no other recourse than to simply get away. Escape is often the best option, and the best escape is a quick one. Like a shark, the driver can never stop moving. She's always racing ahead, always moving forward, making sudden, abrupt turns down new avenues without warning. They say that it's not the destination that's important, it's the trip. Well, if that's true, the, di the driver does its best because ultimately she has no destination in mind. It's never the point. The point is speed, motion, and the ability to change one's mind from second to second and yet do so fluidly and flawlessly. The driver is the defender of the mysteries family. She protects by enabling others to get away. She carries them to safety, always moving forward. All right. So you I have didn't a think that was going to be ridiculously appropriate, but it is. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> you have a being moving towards you. Make a perception check. Claire yes, is oh, going shit. to gonna... sneeze loudly. Because nature. Okay. And I, I love that mind. detail about Claire. Nature. It's it's on me. What? Shit, Claire, I got a nine. Extremely uncomfortable because nature. Well, yeah, Billy's make... like, what are these? Plants? Huh. I'm fixing to make okay, it work. So there well, you go. These... What do you got, Jeff? These are in pots. I don't. What's. Uh, let's see. Uh, nine total. All right. All three of those is enough. Um, you mm -hmm. feel something moving. And you look down and you can see the vines at your feet 
slowly, ever so slowly, creeping up across them and kind of curling like they're they're headed to wrap around your ankles or something. I are there are there trees close to Claire? Like like a branch that she can get off the ground? Not really. You're you're kind of in the center of this clearing. Okay. Claire is going to climb onto Billy. <laughs> okay. All right. Screaming like a little girl that she is because no, just no. All right. You climb on uh, top of Billy. Billy, you're now backpacking Claire. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Albion takes a few steps back away from the uh, the vines. They and... they don't move to follow, right? Um, you see, as you as you back up, um, the vines drop from where your feet were, and you know they kind of lay on what look to be other vines, um, and and then they just sort of straighten out slowly, um, and are, are you staying where you are or? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to uh, be watching this person, this being, moving toward us. Uh, and uh, I think when I realize who this person is, who this being is that is coming to greet us, I will, uh, I will just kind of take a deep breath and stand still and let the vines take purchase. Okay. But initial response, like to step back a few steps and then realize the futility standing in a field covered in vines. I'm not, I'm not going to get away from, uh, <laughs> from these vines and well, and to be fair, they're not with the warden. So they're not moving particularly fast either, mm -hmm. right? So if you if you move around a little bit, like you know, shuffling in place almost, you can keep them off of you, off from restraining you without any real trouble. Yeah, I will. Uh, just periodically take a, a, a step to the side or just take um that's amazing <laughs> sorry i thought you were done um billy in like a cowboy bebop-esque montage uh is going to uh put one hand up to like brace claire so she doesn't so she doesn't fall off and um, start to like avoid the vines and then pay more attention to them for a second as he goes and see if he can get into like a rhythm with them and like uh, try to understand uh, their motivation and move with it, whatever it is. So that probably requires some sort of role. I'm not sure. I'm sure it does, but I'll be darned if I know what that role is. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie. Um, uh, I have understanding motives. I have a plus one in that. You know what? What are Go the ahead. motives of the vice? Go ahead. <laughs> or I could just fine. okay. And and you can even add that. that. That's that's cool. So that's a six total. Sure. You you managed to to 
fall into something of a, a little bit of a choreographed dance with these vines. Um, the goal and, is to like, yeah, have almost a relationship with them, like move with them, not interfere with them, just like be on the same level. With no, I got you. I got you. Mm -hmm. So as this being approaches, it turns its head and kind of looks at you without eyes. But you know, I mean, you know it sees you. You can feel the gaze on you. And um, it watches you do this for a second. And um, so let, let me back up just a little bit. As this thing gets closer, um, you start to hear around you um, the rustle of leaves in the wind and the occasional like you know the sound that you make when you you step on a, a, a stack of, of dried twigs that that little crackle um that punctuates it occasionally um as as it watches you you hear in addition to all of that Kind of like um, the happy twitter of birds. Like that trilling, um, nice summer, we're happy to be alive, kind of a medley of you know, 15 or 20 bird voices at the same time. It, it sounds kind of like that. Uh, <laughs> so, Billy is weirdly uncomfortable with that because he is the complete opposite of Kelton, <laughs> who, who grew up in the woods um, and is even though he's from, you know, presumably somewhere east coasty that is overgrown with vines and things, those are places you don't go. Um, he's used to nightclubs and bars and sidewalks and concrete. And um, so, yeah, he just uh, tries to have his vibe with the vines and keep Claire from falling over, um, but does engage with the entity that is approaching us and just says, Hey, how you doing? In a voice that sounds a lot like wind rushing through a canyon, <laughs> um, you hear it say, Welcome to the green. Why are you here? Hey, Albie, you want to take that one? I'm, I'm, when I'm, we, I'm, uh, I'm, quick question, sorry. Um, when <coughs> we were doing all the research, we got the name of the warders, right? The wardens? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, just make yeah, sure. So out, out of character, um, we Billy specifically read shit and learned about like where we're trying to go on the green, but right now he's just passing the torch to the face of our party, which is Albie. Um, because yeah, he's does better, Albie he's dealing take with this? a Claire. On his back, so he literally is going like, "Hey, you want to take this?" Uh, and then he will say, um, "Claire wait, is clinging to he you." Will there, say, there is no, Claire is not touching the ground. No. Yeah, he he will say like, maybe ask about the three of all knowing. No, yeah, Jesus, uh, Warden, we are here looking for the. 
pieces of our souls that are secreted away within the realm of the green. And we have come to petition for entry into your realm. The, um, the rustling of the leaves and, and that the occasional crackling of, of dead limbs stops and that the, um, the clearing that you're in goes incredibly silent. Um, and then you hear that same voice um, unaccompanied this time. Um, it, and it says, <clears throat> Where did you gain such information? What? Any one where it's a multiplicity of them, but uh, we have, in fact, recovered uh, two pieces of our souls, and we seek to uh, collect all of the pieces so that we might enter the Temple of Vizsla. You seek to enter the presence of the mother? Indeed, yes. Yes, we do. There is a price. We have come willing to pay it. You must share. You must share something that you have learned or discovered with magic. And that is the price of entry into the green? Yes. You must surrender a secret that you have learned. Meanwhile, Billy, <laughs> Claire on his back still, and is still continuing this dance with the vines, unless they've just mellowed out. And uh, Will will chime in. Uh, I'm not doing that. I only have one secret. I'm keeping it. She looks at you, or, or it looks at you, excuse me, um, for a long moment, and then says, but that is a lie, Billy Burroughs. You carry many secrets, many that- Oh, I see where you're going with this. Are not known. Yeah, cool. You can have all those, just not the one. Wait, do we lose the secret, or we just have to share the secret with you, Arabast? You see the creature draw itself up to its full height and look down at you, and, and you... It's obviously you can't tell because it doesn't have a face to make expressions, but it almost feels offended. Uh, 
Who are you to speak so to me when you come to my Was that directed at Claire or Billy? At Claire. Or both. <laughs> okay. No one of great importance. Simply someone who knows that the war did not actually end and am seeking to ensure that the angular serpentine does not actually win, which he has been doing and is... I've already communicated this information with the Empress. I will happily share it with you, Arabast, Churlis. You, you hear that same type of tittering of birds, but it almost sounds like laughter. You lie, Claire Thespian. Someone of no importance? Why, the angular serpentine himself has killed you. That does not sound like no importance to me. Well, yeah, but he's killed Billy, too, so it's not like I'm a lone soldier in this war. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of a dick. I mean, it, it's, it, you know, we met him a couple of times. It's, I don't know. I'm kind of over that guy. We're going we're gonna to figure this out. Very well, then. My price. Um, I think Billy, well, is, uh, Billy is assuming that just any secret will do. Um, so he will um, divulge where uh, where he hid the pills that he was supposed to take um, in the sanatorium. Uh, you know, there was like a, a vent or something in the room that he would toss them into. Um, and he doesn't talk about that place or those experiences ever. Um, so it is pretty intense thing for him, but he'll you know, explain it that it's, there was a vent at the, like the bottom right corner of the room and um, you know, thank God I put the fucking pills there because otherwise I'd still be there instead of being here. So I'm grateful to be in your presence. I appreciate you. And that's my secret. The creature looks at you for a moment and then says... There are many who had difficult experiences when they went to the shadow. Yours is among them, Billy Burroughs. But you did not Shit. learn Yeah, you're that. telling me. You did not learn that secret through magic. You must share one that you have discovered. All right, all right, all right. Um... You know, I've been sitting on this for a long time, almost like almost like I've been part of a campaign that's been going on for a long time, and I've been waiting for a moment to use this. Uh, 
But what if I what if I divulge this incantation to you? It's called Black Candles Give the Same Light. It makes a bunch of illusory little things move about and do whatever I say they want to do. Will that work? It reaches out and you see that very same effect. Mm -hmm. And they dance and weave in the in the air um, over its open hand, and then it closes its hand and they disappear. That is not they the are. secret that you have discovered. Yeah, well, I've only discovered one secret, and I think I'm going to keep it. Do you need one from each of us, or? Um, make, make an intelligence check. <laughs> All of you. <laughs> Such an ass. Ooh, seven. Uh, which, do I have anything? Fine. No. Six. All right. All of you get the sense that what he's looking for is anything that you've discovered using magic. So the answer to a question Ooh. or um, a piece of, mm. of hidden knowledge or a spell or something, anything that you've used magic to uncover. Mm. You know, for example, and okay. I'm not going to make it so that you can use this one, Claire, so you're going to have to come up with something different. <laughs> but um, you used an ephemera object. You used something that Albion made, which was magic, to discover the filing um, schema that the Goetics use in their library. If you were to explain that schema to him, that would be a piece of knowledge that you gained using magic. Okay. Does that make sense? And does he need one from each of us or just one in general? You're under the assumption that it's one from each simply because every time you've gone to a warden, you've had mm -hmm. to deal with that separately. Okay. Um, yeah, Billy's just going to be like, because he is immediately engaged, I suppose. Um, yeah, uh, so uh, I use magic to bring my buddy, Gabriel, uh, into this reality. And uh, he divulged. Uh, a ton of secrets. You, what do you want to know? I mean, um, I got a bunch of mage coins out of it. Uh, he's the one that directed us to visit this temple. Uh, you know, before that, we were kind of rudderless and just doing whatever we could do to survive. But, you know, now we have sort of a direction and, you know, he's the reason for that. Um, I'm sure I'll be okay without that knowledge if you want to take it. I do not need your knowledge. But yes, that is something that you have learned through magic. It is something that you have brought to life through magic. Because that is what magic does. It gives life to things. And he looks oh, yeah. at Claire and then he looks the... at... Thing of the bar. Albion. Mm. 
You said Claire first, so. I was going to let you go first. Okay, nope. well, Claire is going to think for a very long moment. And check her notes because I have lots of notes. Um, yeah, she's gonna look up at him and well, I used a magical ability to discover that the actual creator of uh, the ectophasmic radio. Was act was actually a man named Leander Z. Finnerty. He is actually the one that invented it, not the guy that they're toting about. Um, I've currently got stories being brought to life. If you'd like to have a listen, and she reaches into her pouch and pulls out uh, a travel radio and turns it to the channel and starts it playing, and he can hear the place. He inclines his head and says, You did indeed find Master Finity with your magic and brought to life the plays of Orisad once more. And then his, his face turns to you, Albion. I, I gave up something. I don't remember what it was, but I know that it meant a great deal to me. I gave up something in order to disseminate this knowledge, to learn how to connect this information across the suns and spread it so that all could hear. I gave up so much that what was left of me was very different, but I do remember I do remember some days I remember working in my laboratory and I remember the joy of being a maker. Tastes like bitter ashes in my mouth, but it's nice to remember. Your magic brought to life hope for those in the actuality. It brought to life truth once more. Your sacrifice was not in vain. Albion Finch. And as he finishes speaking, the um, the clearing at, well, clearing, and I, I say that tongue in cheek, at one end sort of seems to open up. Like the trees, they don't get up, but they sort of shift out of the way. And you can see, um, you can see like a, a path leading out. Um, 
of the clearing. At which point, um, comedy relieved Billy with Claire in tow uh, is going to address the warden of the Green Sun and say, "Hey, uh, it like which way to the like the the tree of the all knowing or whatever with the helicopter seeds? Is it over here?" Uh oh, run that by me again. Sorry. Uh, so he says, um, hey, uh, Warden of the Green Sun, uh, just so, like, we're looking for the, the, the tree of the knowledge or the tree of the all-knowing, whatever, and it has helicopter seeds and stuff, I read about it. Is it this way? Could you give us any, like, direction? Thank you for your time. He looks at you and you hear that tittering of birds again <laughs> and um he st it, it stretches out a hand towards the gap in the trees yeah okay okay I'll, we'll, we'll get out of your way sorry it's you know thought maybe you could like just give us some basic advice it's i mean you live here it's fine i'll see you later Okay. <laughs> I think we move on. Yeah, once we're away from the vines, Claire will carefully get off your back and yeah, nature. Yeah, it's weird, right? Ugh. So there I'll, what I'll what I'll tell you is this that there that there is um, away from the vines, and then there's away from the vines, right? You you don't actually get away from the vines by going through that gap. There is um, what kind of looks and feels like portions of tree underneath you, like a, a really, really big... And by big, I mean like something like a 25 foot across branch, right? Um, kind of tucked underneath a bunch of other vines and brush and scrub and moss. And it, it's just, it, it's like this hodgepodge of everything. And you can't quite tell if, if you know, the, the vines ate a tree or something, or if it was like a, you know, a fallen branch of some kind, of some large, massive tree, or, or whatever, right? But you get little snippets here or there, and it doesn't move like it's a separate uh, branch, like... Uh, Oh, like if you're standing in one spot and Billy's off five feet to your side and he's standing in another spot on the same looking material, it doesn't move. It's not, you're not like moving at, the sa at different um, rates or, or uh, in different ups and downs. It's like the whole thing's connected. If that makes any sense. I'm, I'm probably not describing it very well, but. Creepy. That that's the word you're looking for. It's creepy. All right, so the green is creepy. Yeah, if so, we come out and we don't see the tree that we're looking for, I'm gonna look at Billy and Albie and go, um, should we should I Call on teacup? Or perhaps summon a spirit of the green that 
is familiar with the area and could serve as a guide. A teacup is a spirit of the grain. Yep, she is. Sort of. Just the little uh, uh, the spastic. But if I don't call on her first, she'll be sad. and mm -hmm. we, we don't want to deal with that. There'd be tears and snot and yeah. So I'm going to make the very familiar gesture and call out the name Teacup. Okay. So about 10 seconds later, you hear a very familiar voice crying out, clear, 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 clear. And teacup flies into view but instead of her normal greenish kind of garb she's almost completely covered in pink glitter hello darling one it exploded everywhere Yes, I, I believe I told you it would do so. It was it amazing. That is so good to hear. And she flies over to you and she gives you a hug. I'm going to pat her on the head like I would a little kid. Now, dear heart, the reason I called upon you is because we need a bit of minor assistance. Teacup backs up, and you see a fairy-sized mark of pink glitter on your clothes. What do you need? How can I help you? Do you, do you have... And she looks to the left, and she looks to the right. Do you have more glitter? Claire is going to reach into her purse and pull out a small vial and turn it, and it's silver glitter. She starts vibrating in place. She's so excited. Billy, ask your questions. Oh, Billy is doing something else. <laughs> like, while this is happening. Um, uh, which I think is funny, so I'm going to go with that. Um, so Billy is doing a weave. He's going to weave um, space from infinity, um, <clears throat> distance from freedom. Uh, I had a whole thing. Hold on. And um, dreams from sleep and give himself a vision of the the tract that we should take to get to where we're going and then he's going to use his forte ability on himself asleep or awake to make himself go to sleep um so that he can have a dream that shows him where we need to go so that's what's happening while claire's doing that. <laughs> she turns okay. to him and is like you turn to Billy, and Billy is collapsed on the the ground. I'm going to call it ground, but it's whatever. Anyway, um, collapsed on the ground, and he appears to be sleeping. All right. I will ask Teacup if she can give me directions to the tree that we need to find that has the pieces of our soul. We're assuming as pieces of our soul. She blinks and looks up at you and says, you want to go to the tree of the all knowing? Yes. No one goes there. Huh? 
Well, perhaps I'll be the first. I would like to go. Can you direct me? I'm not going to make you go with me. I just need directions, dear one. Oh, and I rolled a seven on my uh, die for summoning her. Um. Well, Josh, you lost Discord. Well, we could do whatever we want then. So, um, yes, we'll become the emperors of the green. And <laughs> the yeah, end. nature. Uh, Jeff, that you're way. muted. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so with that, uh, I just say we go. We there we find the stuff and like some really cool objects of power it's gonna be incredible y'all incredible <laughs> i agree i like this idea yeah me too then when josh gets back we're back home having pizza and albion's like <laughs> well i don't think i've ever had pizza before my goodness <laughs> Or whatever the heck. And Billy says, you know? from the East Coast is like, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is okay. It should be, you know, the crust could be thinner. It's, uh, I'll see better. Can you hear me? Can you hear yes, you? I can. So we just agreed that we uh, we already got there. We got the stuff, and now we're having pizza back in Saturday. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also. <laughs> Pretty sure I got a level power. 10 object of power. Yeah. A level 10 yeah. object of... Dude, you're good. Uh, mm, mm, yeah. mm. Fantastic, right? This whole apostate thing's really working out for you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> also, just so everyone knows, don't forget this is actually applying to the game we're playing. There is a creepy thing in a coat of feather fur with a goat head and deer antlers that vibrates and makes noise following Billy around everywhere he goes. So don't forget. Yep. It's still there. Yeah, I know. I, I, I'm sure it's capable of things. I don't know what they are. It guided me at one point. It's there. Just so we have the whole so. range. I'm going to have Teacup give me directions. Okay. So Teacup gives you directions. Um, and it actually doesn't sound like it's very far away. Um, almost like uh, the Warden of Green puts you fairly close to it by, by itself. Um, but at the end of the directions, it... Um, or, or she kind of leans in close and whispers, but, but be careful. There's, there's, there's snakes. Big, big snakes. I don't like snakes. Thank you, dear heart. Your, your assistance is greatly appreciated. And I'm going to reach in and I'm going to pull out a second small vial of glitter. And this one's going to be purple. Okay. Um, her eyes get really big and she looks at them and then gingerly reaches out and takes just the silver one. And she looks up at you, and her eyes are really big, like almost deathly afraid. And she says, keep that one. Just, just be careful. I will do that, I promise. I will be the utmost careful. And she slowly backs away and then turns and darts off. 
and she doesn't run into anything when she does. Fascinating. That's unheard of. <laughs> I'm going to give Billy a few minutes to, to sleep and do whatever he's doing. And then... I was going to say that would be a hilarious time for him to just wake up right, right after you did that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I gotta go. <laughs> so your dream, you you managed to see um you you managed to see uh the tree. I, I did three sorcery on that, just so you know. Okay. Um and and the way to get there from where you are, but you see um, all kind of all around the, the trunk of this tree and the trees around it, um, you see what look to be um, massive snakes weaving their way through it like thread over a needle or something, a knitting needle. Um, the snakes have gigantic heads, um, with flared, um, rib, ribbed webbing tips, like, uh, like a lizard almost. Um, and instead of scales, um, you see what look to be, um, similar feathers to the angels that you saw in the silver, um, in the garden of, of uh, souls. That, that metal looking um, razor sharp feathery kind of metal thing. Do I know if I'm asleep or awake? I have a couple of questions. Um, by this point, I would think you know when you're asleep and when you're awake. So, yes. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what is uh, Merlin doing? <laughs> Merlin's just standing there. Actually, he's not standing um, so much as he's floating. So his his robe, the hem of his robe, you don't see any feet. Um, the hem of his robe is about six inches in the air higher than um, the vines or oh. growth or whatever that's under him. Okay, so I look around. Um, what are Claire and Albion doing? Uh, Claire looks to be um, staring off in a direction holding a small vial of what looks like purple glitter. And Albion is? Uh, Albion is looking at the snakes and is deciding how polite he's going to have to be. Okay. And I do or do not um, have an idea of exactly where we're supposed to go to get to the point that whatever. The you do. Um, so are you, did, did you share your vision somehow with Albion? So, Is that? No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just making, I'm just trying to be certain that Billy understands um, that. Uh, and the snake thing is not cool. So uh, he's oh, going wait. to... Are the snakes not hey, here snakes. right That's now? That's terrible. Okay, no. never mind. Then I was in... Oh, only, I only in, only in okay. Billy's perception. Okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> so he's going to. Uh, hey, guys, there's, uh, you, you avoid those snakes. Let's go this way. I know exactly where we need to go. Let's just, just follow me. Just don't fuck with those snakes. That's and he goes that direction. 
so there's there's no snakes where you are. The snakes are at the tree where you're going. Oh, they're at the tree where we're going. Okay. Yes. So, so instead, yeah. So what's those snakes? These are the snakes. The tree and the yeah, it's really creepy. Let's go there. And then he just goes. He's like, I know, I know what's going on. I know where to go. I think. And he will take off and wait for the others to follow. Yeah, I'll be in this. I will follow already. as long as he's going in the same direction that uh, Teacup said to go. He is. <laughs> you know, but it, should it really be that surprising? I mean, this is where Teacup's from, so. Nope. How far right. is that tree? Um, you you get the sense, um, and Teacup told you, Claire, and obviously you heard Albion, um, that you can actually walk there from where you are in half a day. Half a day, Jesus. Okay. Um, um, I yeah, will say no, to Claire the does not like the idea. This up? Of walking, so Claire would like to summon a mount. Okay. Order of operations, Billy definitely says that before you summon things, because that takes a long time. Let me get this over with. All right, let's do it. And Billy will just sit, like, butt against a tree and, uh, you know, take a shot out of his flask and enjoy nature. Because he's never really experienced it before. And like Claire do Claire. No. I'm saying it doesn't take Claire that long to summon anymore. It but used to take 10 it minutes. Takes. But it takes like a minute now. But yeah, what does Billy want to do? What does Billy want to do? No, Billy, Billy just said like, you want me to, do you want to just get this over with? Yeah, because he could weave there. Oof. Okay, do it. Make um, it happen. Let's do that instead. Yep. Uh, so, uh, movement, space, and I think that I only need two. Um, so I can, I, I can, I think I can get away with two sorcery and like move us with movement and space to the thing that I can see. Um, Probably. And, I will spend those, and I will roll for the hell of it, which is a nine. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to move all of us to that place. If I, if you think it needs to be more sorcery, because there's so many of us, no. that makes sense. I, I don't actually. Um, the uh, uh, normal die was a nine. The like magic die was a three. Okay, but it's not three sorcery. So Meh. you are plunged into um, almost complete twilight. The um, the place where you are is something of a clearing. Um the way the place where you entered is something of a clearing. Except um, in the middle of this clearing, and it's much, much larger than the other, is a large tree that stretches up and spreads out to cover the entire canopy of what would be um, its... if If it weren't there, you'd be able to see up into the sky, right? Um, it lets pinpoints of light through to where it, it almost feels like you're in a starry night. Um, and you can hear the, that there is scraping movement around you. Um, as you look up, you see what look to be um, seeds or, or, or 
plant uh, growths hanging down like ferns from this tree that's growing in the center. And there's thousands, hundreds of thousands of these things just hanging down in the air. Um, aside from that, uh, the, the pinpoints of light that penetrate from the outside, occasionally you see a ripple of light flash through these hanging seeds or whatever they are, right? Um, almost like almost aimlessly, like lightning, right? Like, you know how when you take a still photograph of lightning and it looks kind of jagged as it connects over to and, and almost like random, um, it, it the light travels something like that, but in a very fluid, almost like a breath through these hanging seeds. And they light up in different colors um as that travels through them and then it's dark again or or near dark um and it happens again in about every oh are you going to stay and watch to see how often it happens i guess yeah i think so i mean uh-oh. There was not a DM. <laughs> Are you going to... Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> hey, it's 2.30. So, maybe we uh, call it a break. All right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right. Since he's having issues and needs to reboot his computer, we're going to uh, put it on a break for, uh, say, 10 minutes and come back. Yep. All right. Yeah, it's about time for a break, anyhow. Yeah. Now I'm just going to need to get my VNC back up. That's sweet, buddy. Oh. This is my sweet little man. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> yeah. It's a, oh, the squishy it's nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's very sweet. He's too cuddly sometimes. And a lot of...
Okay, so um, it, it looks like um, the technical gremlins and uh, um, magical flux that uh, carry around Saturine are uh, affecting our stream. And uh, so Discord's been been kind of wonky, and, and that's kind of what we're using to do video and voice chat. Um, oh, he's in or something. Hang on. I may have spoken too soon. Come to mama. Wait for it. Wait for it. And yeah. Boom. There he is. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. Discord was like. We got a regularly scheduled program. <laughs> yeah. That's like when I was a kid, right? So. When I first started um, working with computers and um, would, was, was learning programming and learning about operating systems and things like that, um, I, I didn't really know what I was doing. And so I kind of had to figure everything out by experiment, by trial and error. And when I get really, really frustrated, I'd look at my computer and I'd shout at it, I swear by all that's holy, I will format your hard drive if you don't start working. And almost invariably, it would start working. Like it yeah. was this living thing that did not want me to touch its hard drive. <laughs> so yeah, it's that's that's kind of weird. It's uh, we're gonna we're gonna you know, so hang like, up and we're, the, we're gonna be done with the solid. stream. Oh wait, here comes it's Kelton. <laughs> Yeah, that no, was no, crazy. no, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's nuts. All right, so we're back. And um, we're back in the actual, actually, we're back in the green. And we're um, uh, looking at a tree. Now, I don't remember, I, I, I don't know how far I got or how far you heard or whatever. Uh. Claire is looking for the snakes. Okay. So um, the, the sound that you heard of motion and scraping, um, you hear it regularly and your eyes are drawn to the darkness um, of where the trees are thick and you see movement. Um, it looks to be probably, if you're imagining a snake weaving its way through trees, that snake's body is probably 20 feet wide. And you have absolutely no idea how long it is. What? I'm sorry. 20 feet wide. Yeah. You can't know the metal gate. Big, big snake. Maybe more than one. That's a very big nope rope. And it's wrapped around the tree that we need to get to because our soul is at. There's you you look at the tree and you see um so have you ever seen a tree where the the roots and the tree um there's like air gap underneath the roots like it goes it, it arches and goes down there's a bunch of roots at the bottom of this tree and probably 80% of them have that air gap and you see moving through the air gap and winding up and over and around at the base of this tree is one of these snakes and it's wound all the way around the, the tree is massive right um it's trunk you know from from your vantage point you're staring at it you're guessing this thing's probably easy 150 feet across and this thing appears to be looped around it several times. 
and it's just lazily coiling around and and um you know looping over itself looping over the roots or the roots i should say going it, it's not paying any attention to you um but you also see other movement that sounds and looks similar in the trees that surround this tree um so you've got a, a massive clearing and then there's you know trees on the outside of it and there's there's something there that's probably a snake too maybe more than one i do not like this uh i'm clear it's rainy and go ahead go ahead I said, I look to Rainy and say, remember to be charming. We've uh, got a lot of friends we have to make to get where we're going. And Rainy, I just start walking toward it. <laughs> Rainy is, um, so he's in his fox form. And he is on your back. And there goes Kelton. He's on your back and he is clutching your bot like his claws are digging into your skin, clutching your body. He's scared out of his mind. Now, Reyna, you know, we've just got to be friendly and we'll be fine. They seem like thoroughly reasonable snakes. Claire will look to see if there's anything glowing and, you know, give Kelton time to get back in there. Um, other than that, that lightning-like breathing glow that occasionally whispers through um, those, those seeds that are hanging, there's really nothing glowing. Um, you do... At the longer you're there, you do notice that it happens at regular intervals. All right. I'm going to point out the glow that I see to Albie and ask him if he's seeing the same glow. Yes, he is. Okay. So it's not like different pieces of our soul glowing at our approach. No. But you're you're also not like right next to it either. It's not like hanging six inches above your head. This is probably forty feet in the air. All right, I am going to stop a respectful distance away and call a friendly greeting to the snake. Okay. Because I'm not going to get up on him and it, it decide that I look like a good tree to wrap around and eat. No, I'm good. I'm, I, no. I don't think that he would even be able to wrap around any of us. I think we would just be crushed in the process. Let's, let's go ahead and make an interaction roll just for giggles. All right, I am going to throw a, a, a bene at this and and roll. Ooh, Point nine! To assist. Point Still going to assist. Okay. That makes it 11. Um, the snake on the tree stops moving. At least it, it stops circling the tree. You hear 
movement and can see eventually um, a portion of that snake doubling back on itself. And it turns and it looks at you. I greet you. We're here for pieces of our soul. Um, we would like to approach the tree to see if the tree houses pieces of our, our soul. Would we, that be okay with you, sir? I, I don't want to invade your, your space. I can offer you a couple of chickens. Uh, I carry those in my bag for my buddies. Okay. Um, all right. Um, so here's here's what happened, and I, and I'm gonna do this, and and I'm gonna ask for Billy's forgiveness or, or for Kelton's forgiveness later, because I'm I'm kind of stealing something, but the. Um, the figure that he had summoned floats past him. And it, I mean, half of the figure goes through him to get to the front. And it stares down this snake. Um, and then... As, um, as you watch, this snake gets closer, the, this massive head, and you can see the fangs. Like, this isn't, um, this isn't like a regular snake where the fangs are inside the mouth and when it, they only come out when it bites. You can see the fangs on the snake. Um... Saber tooth snake. Yeah, kind of like a saber tooth snake. It's it's weird, but you know this is this is invisible sun. Weird's what we do. So um, it comes closer, and it looks at this thing as it's it's coming closer, and then it pushes through it, and the the thing is is like a ghost, right? Um, it's not a ghost, but it, it it pushes through it like it were. Um, it's incorporeal. And it comes over to where you three are. And it slowly lays its head down. I'm, I'm going to pull out a chicken and offer it to it. It ignores the chicken. Is the chicken live? Yes. Okay, the chicken's going crazy as you offer it to the snake. But yeah. the, the snake ignores you. Okay, I'm going to tuck the chicken back in my bag. We humbly request passage. May we climb onto your head and ascend the tree. The snake's head lifts up, nods once, and then lowers again. Okay. I approach, and I begin climbing up the thing, hanging on to <laughs> the, uh, the edge of the scales for dear life. And, uh... Okay. Um, this is going to be another roll. <laughs> Claire is going to follow <coughs> very carefully. This is going to be a physicality roll. Actually, no. Make make this a movement roll. Nine. Stop it! My apologies. Let's see. 
I got uh, a seven total. Um, and I'm going to say that Kelton passed it just because he's not here. But um, the three of you managed to ascend on top of this massive snake's head um, without cutting yourselves on its non-scales. Okay? And it lifts you up and you can feel it moving around the tree as it climbs the tree. And it takes you probably a good five minutes. And as, it, as you get up, you, um, you wind around the tree itself and you can see down in uh, the surrounding area, you, you're counting what you're guessing is at least three more of these things. And you finally get up to the, the level of the, um, the hanging seeds and it goes a little bit higher than the bottom level, I guess we'll call it, okay? Um, and then it kind of extends out along one of these branches and lifts its head again to place you underneath uh, a clump of these seeds that are hanging down. And um, Claire, you see one that um, is uh, now glowing and it's, it's pulsing particularly fast. Claire is going to reach out and very carefully take the one that's glowing for her. It matches your heartbeat. That fits because Claire's scared of shit. So, and then Claire will tuck the piece of soul in her thing and gently kind of pat the top of the snake's head. Thank you. It moves back along the branch and then goes up some more and goes out along a different branch and it extends out and there's another one glowing um, and, and beating in time with your heart, Almian. Much slower. Much slower Albion than, was, yeah. <laughs> Albion was very convinced that we would make great friends with this snake. Uh, See, now if it Albion had been Rainey's, will... it would have been like eight times what, what Claire's was doing. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be will uh, reach out and pluck his uh, his seed, and then it goes down and does the same thing um, a little bit lower with um, uh, Billy. Um, and when it goes down to the the ground again um the the figure that had accompanied billy is gone and so it's just the three of you and and he lays it the, the snake lays its head down and allows you to get off i'm dead Claire's going to get down with Billy and Albion and look at the snake. Would you like the chicken now, or do you think it's not quite a meal? It's like the it, size of a grain of sand. <laughs> yeah. It, it kind of backs off, and you, you hear it, it flicks its tongue out, and you hear kind of like a hissing laugh. And, and it goes oh, back. I can make it bigger. <laughs> it goes back to circling its tree. I can make the chicken bigger. I have the big spell. It would need to be so, so, so much bigger. It would need to be 20 feet 
At least the world snake even. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it. I'm just gonna think your that. heart. Your heart's in the right place, but uh, well, your sense is somewhere else. I'd say. Ah. Uh, Um, yeah, I, I suppose we've gotten what we came for. Did we go. either of you want to stay in the green a little longer, explore, do, do a little, uh, no, no, I, I think I'm, 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 I've had enough of nature. I thought that might be the case. Uh, I am going to open a portal to uh, the place nearest to where we were going to pick up Claire's house. Okay. I like this idea. Okay. We can walk on through. The three of you arrive back at Saturnine, and um, <clears throat> Screech and the uh, the Volkswagen Beetle are waiting for you about 150 feet from where you are. Okay, we're gonna head for it. I think this is probably a good spot to call it and meet up again in four weeks with. Uh, Help not being able to rejoin us. I agree. So, um, folks, thanks for, for hanging with us. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We'd, uh, um, you know, I'd like to say that uh, that's never going to happen again, but, you know, life and Murphy and the whole nine yards. Um, so we'll, we'll post this up on YouTube um, so you can remember what happened. And uh, we'll see you in four weeks um, right back here uh, in the actuality, finding our soul's direction once more. Um, I think we'll forego uh, shout outs this week other than, um, you know, a, a good friend of ours, um, Manipot Studios. Please go watch them, um, support their channel. They're awesome. We love them, and uh, if you get a chance and you happen to be out on the East Coast um, in the, the uh, Virginia, Washington, D.C. area, um, next weekend, come visit Angel Citadel. We're going to be at RavensCon. We're running some games, and uh, we'd love to meet you. So um, until then, from our Citadel to yours, happy gaming.